Coming up, the Bird family explores the island of Sao Miguel in the Azores. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. The Azores. These volcanic islands rise from the great depths of the Atlantic Ocean to peaks surpassing 2,000 meters above sea level. Along their rugged slopes, lush vegetation and cooling breezes make these islands a paradise. And the clear water beckons divers from around the world. Located way out in the Atlantic, the Azores Archipelago consists of nine different islands, each a former volcano growing at the intersection of three major tectonic plates. The archipelago is part of Portugal, the closest major landmass, 1,400 kilometers to the east. The Bird family is setting out on another epic Blue World adventure. We arrive in the capital island of Sao Miguel to be met by our friend Arlindo Serrao of Portugal Dive, who has planned our itinerary along with his wife, Sarah. Together, we will embark on an awesome diving excursion. We have a day to adjust to the time zone before we start diving, and what better way to spend it than exploring the island? Our first stop, the town of Furnas, where we find a huge lake green with algae. On the shores of the lake, we find the reason the place is called Furnas. It's a hotbed of volcanic activity. The air smells of sulfur, and we find a steaming landscape where nothing can grow. There are boiling pools of water known as calderas. Here, the ground is so hot that local restaurants cook meals in pots buried in the soil for six hours. This traditional local dish, known as cozido das furnas, means volcano stew. That, uh, they come here early morning, around 5 a.m. Yeah. They put the pot inside of the hole, they put a clutch, they pile up. Tender. Next, we head on over to another volcanic wonder of Sao Miguel, Terra Nostra Park. This giant hot tub, originally built in 1770, gets its heat and its color from iron-rich geothermally heated groundwater. Liam and I decide to give it a try. Oh, it's hot. Is it hot? It's hot. Hot. It's hot. Okay. We're in a rusty, rusty hot bath. In the iron water. <laughs> in the iron water. After our swim, we're off again on the big blue bus, heading up into the cool air at higher altitude while our tour guide, Andre, tells us about the island. We came by south, we are going back by north, mm. We're heading for the mountain of Fogo. Soon we reach the cloud layer, and we can barely see the road ahead. We arrive at the highest lake in the Azores, Lagoa de Fogo, which means fire lake. And that's an appropriate name, as this lake lies in the crater of a dormant volcano. The next day, we hit the dive shop. We brought all of our luggage, because we're getting on a liveaboard. Our home away from home for the next week is a 44-foot catamaran called Water and Wind. Space is limited on a sailboat, so we take the opportunity to get unpacked at the dock. 
<laughs> Porthole here. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so this is the cabin. It's uh, as you can see, we have uh, sufficient space to store all of our stuff. The question is, where do we store us? We'll make it work. And look, skylight. This is pretty cool. This is the kids' room. I think it's funny. They have a divider between the bunks. It's a brilliant idea. Whoa! Later, Captain Carlos gives us a boat briefing. Some things in the boat. It has several mistakes um, and some things that we upgraded, so I will stop. Then we get our dive gear assembled before departure. Finally, it's time to leave the marina and head out on our adventure. We are doing something that I have never done before. We are on a liveaboard with sails and we are sailing. There is no motor running. Now you can hear the scuba compressor is running because hey, we got to fill some tanks. But we are going on wind power, baby. While Captain Carlos is navigating to the first dive site, we're suiting up. Who's driving this thing? It's our first ever dive in the Azores and we're excited to see what it looks like. We follow our dive master, Mateo, into a rocky habitat filled with swaying seaweed. The water here is not consistently warm enough to support the growth of hard corals, so the terrain looks more like you would see in New England, except with crystal clear visibility. The volcanic rocks contain myriad holes, swim-throughs, and overhangs giving us lots of fun places to explore. When we emerge from a swim through, we often get to swim through our own exhaled breath, percolating through the porous rock. Out on the sand, I find a pair of goatfish foraging for breakfast. They dig down into the bottom for worms and mollusks, using their sensory whiskers, called barbels, to detect their quarry. Not far away, a stingray is also digging for food. Unfortunately, our less than stealthy approach leaves a little to be desired. Soon I find another much larger stingray, and this old girl had a terrible accident involving her tail. She no longer has a stinger for protection. At the edge of the sand, the kids find an old anchor. A 
A school of two-banded sea bream pass by as we search for more creatures on the sand. Then Liam points out a master of camouflage, a flounder. Nearby, a failure at camouflage, the purple sea star. So this one is also a failure at getting its color right. A small octopus watches me from behind a barricade of shells. Meanwhile, Elise has attracted the attention of a type of sea bass known as a black tail comber. This fish has a limited range, only found in the eastern Atlantic and western Mediterranean. At first, it appears that the fish is looking for something to eat from the sand. But then Elise's dive whistle seems interesting. Looks like Elise has made a friend. With our tanks getting low, it's time to head up the line. We do a safety stop at 15 feet. Then Mateo collects the line. The boat doesn't anchor because it's too destructive. The buoy tells Captain Carlos where we are so he can come pick us up. Later, we head on over to a very famous spot. The Vila Franca Islet is a dormant volcano popular with swimmers and cliff divers. The entire islet and the waters around it are a nature preserve, and we can hardly wait to dive it. topography continues underwater. We're checking out the site. The locals are checking us out. We pass numerous schools of dreamfish, a species of sea bream that is known to cause frightening hallucinations if eaten. Fun to watch, not fun to eat. Nearby, a pair of Ferrari parrotfish munching on algae. The colorful ones are female and the gray one is male. In the parrotfish world, the females are usually the pretty ones. On our third dive of the day, we visit the wreck of the Dory, a Liberty ship that sank in 1964. The wreck is twisted and broken and has a fur coat of seaweed and algae but it has become home to lots of fish.
we swim around the superstructure looking for interesting things. Liam finds an old pump or compressor with a pulley that looks a lot like a steering wheel. Meanwhile, Christine found the telegraph, a communications device used on a ship for the pilot on the bridge to order the engine room to power the vessel at a desired speed. In the stern, we find a moray eel. And the ship's boilers still stand, even after nearly 60 years underwater. Soon we reach the end of the dive and head up the line towards dinner. Our trip to the Azores is off to an incredible start. We did some island touring and got our first day in the water. But we have two more amazing locations to visit on our Azores Liveaboard adventure in the blue world. Hey guys, if you want to learn more about diving in Portugal, check out PortugalDive.com. They're the Portugal diving experts.